You call the God of Islam he. Yeah. <laughs> Want an explanation? <laughs> well, Muslims believe that God has a white chromosome. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So in Arabic, as well as Hebrew, there's something I have to understand about the grammar. So every noun in Arabic and in Hebrew has a gender assigned to it. Every noun. Sometimes it's obvious what's known as natural gender. And again, this is also a point of contention, contention nowadays. But traditionally, uh, a boy was masculine. So walad is the word for boy, or in Hebrew, yedid. So the, uh, the ism ishara, the demonstrative pronoun, would be masculine. Right? So even the pronoun, demonstrative pronouns in Arabic and in Hebrew are genderfied. So I would say, had that waladun, this is masculine, a boy. Right? Or in Hebrew, I say, ze yelid, this is a boy. Natural gender. But sometimes there is no natural gender. Right? For example, the moon, no natural gender. So Arabs in the distant past, and Jews in the distant past, they would just assign a gender. We don't really know why they would assign male or female, but they would just assign gender. So they decided the moon is masculine. And the sun is feminine in Arabic. Right? So God does not have a gender. The Quran says, shape. There's nothing like God whatsoever. There's nothing like God. So nothing in creation resembles God. So if we're male and female, if we're black and white, if we're made of matter, if I'm standing on something, if I'm breathing, none of these things apply to God. God is completely dissimilar to his creation, essentially. But the word Allah is grammatically masculine. Is so it has a lexical gender. So because it has a lexical gender of masculinity assigned to it, in the Quran it says, Huwa, he is. He is. Right? It doesn't mean God is male. And anyone who says God is male, Muslim scholars would say, that's anathema. He's, uh, that position is not acceptable. They would consider that blasphemy to say God is male or female. But God uses the masculine pronoun because the word Allah has grammatical gender. The, gr the, the grammatical gender of the name of God is masculine. It does not mean that God has a natural gender. Though. Yes? About the image, being made in the image of God. That yeah. So that's interesting because uh, that is in Genesis 2, and there's also a hadith of the Prophet. So it's not in the Quran, but there's a hadith of the Prophet where it says, Basically, God created Adam. And here, Adam does not mean the person Adam, it's generic, the human being, Adam, right? God created the human being in his image. Right? So Muslim scholars, and you know, Maimonides also deals with this verse. Maimonides does not believe in divine incarnation. He is anti-anthropomorphism. Maimonides says the meaning of this, as well as Imam Ghazali, they both say that the meaning of this is, what is this image of God? The image of God is the ability to reason. That's God's quote-unquote image. God doesn't have a physical image. So God created the human being with the ability to reason. Just as God has infinite knowledge, he's qualitatively omniscient, human beings also have that ability. This is our differentia, to use Aristotelian nomenclature. What, what makes the human being different than the animals? It isn't my physical strength. You know, put me in a room with a, a lion, I'm done, right? Uh, it's not our, you know, my eyesight. Uh, the eagle can spot fish underwater from two miles up in the air. So what makes us different? Why can we build skyscrapers and do trigonometry is because of our intellect. So that's the so-called image of God according to Maimonides and according to uh, Imam al-Ghazali who's um, sort of the Maimonides or Aquinas of Islam because God doesn't have a physical image. It's the ability to reason. Yeah. Of course there have been anthropomorphists in Islamic history that believe God has limbs and he sits on a physical throne and things like that. Uh, but it's considered a deviant position, at least according to the normative Sunni and Shia understandings of theology.